Welcome to Free Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. Kansas City Chiefs kicker Harrison Butker is facing backlash after he encouraged young women to ignore the quote, diabolical lies, telling them to abandon marriage and motherhood for a career. Butker earned two unlikely allies, though, in commentators Bill Maher and Whoopi Goldberg. Let's listen to what they had to say. I don't see what the big crime is. I really don't. And I think this is part of the problem people have with the left, is that lots of people in this country are like this. Like he's saying, some of you may go on to lead successful careers, but a lot of you are excited about this other way that people, everybody used to be. And now, can it, can't that just be a choice too? And I feel like they feel very put upon. Like, there's only one way to be a good person, and that's to get an advanced degree from one of those asshole factories like Harvard. <laughs> I find it it's very very ironic that he's he's saying, you know what, you, in my world, you know, uh, we like the women to stay at home and just have babies. And the college kids and the young people find this absolutely abhorrent. But they're demonstrating for Hamas right. to make that a law. It's not just an opinion in Hamas that you stay home and have the babies. We will enforce you for doing that. Okay, I just wanted to make that point. I like when people say what they need to say. He's at a Catholic college. Yeah. He's a staunch Catholic. These are his beliefs, and he's welcome to them. I don't have to believe them. Right. I don't have to accept them. The ladies that were sitting in that audience do not have to accept them. <coughs> the same way we want respect when Colin Kaepernick takes a knee. Right. We want to give respect to people who's Ideas are different from ours because the man who says he wants to be president, you know who? Yeah. He says the way to act is to take away people's right mm -hmm. to say how they feel. We don't want to be that. We don't want to be those people. So I'm okay with him saying whatever he says. And the women who are sitting there, if they take his advice, good for them, they'll be happy. If they don't, good for them, they, they'll be happy a different way. So I suppose I shouldn't be shocked that the left still is capable of being outright outraged by literally anything. But for some reason, I was actually shocked <laughs> by the reaction to Harrison Bucker's commencement address. This was at Benedictine College. It's a traditional Catholic school. And he did not say that women are required to become mothers. He did not say you all have to do this. But here's what worked for me and my wife. And he even had an entire separate section of the speech dedicated to his advice for men. And yet somehow he has been heralded as like the new misogynist because of the fact that he said, hey, a lot of you are probably excited about being wives and mothers. Yeah, I saw the outrage first and then I thought, okay, he, he probably said some pretty incendiary stuff and it's not that that would make me think he should be canceled for it or whatever. But then I watched it and uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a very Catholic speech given to a Catholic audience at a Catholic college by a practicing conservative Catholic, which is perfectly fine. Um, you're, you're right that he said in the speech that he didn't say everybody has to make that choice. He said that the choice to become uh, a mother is something probably many people in the audience will end up finding just as much value in and so on and so forth. And yes, that's perfectly fine. Um, there, there was a little bit of faux outrage to it, though, because I saw, for instance, the NFL, well, it was, and I fell victim for this. There, there was a headline that the NFL had um, condemned uh, the statement he made. Okay, then you actually look at it. Well, they, they didn't condemn anything. They just said that, um, you know, they disagree with the statement because they're, it's, Catholic Orthodoxy, whatever, uh, but he is entitled to make it, and that's fine. And they didn't need to say anything about his uh, speech anyway. But if they were going to say something, that's fine. So there's a, they didn't you know, swoop in because they've all gone woke or something, and they hate families, which was the thrust of the commentary on it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know why they had to release a statement at all. Like, oh, his views don't represent those of the NFL. It's like, okay, well, what are the NFL's views that like women don't want to become wives and mothers? Because, <laughs> I mean, even if you take this outside of Catholic Orthodoxy, there is nothing wrong with his speech. There was nothing that would be considered outside of the majority opinion. I mean, just the idea that women want to become wives and mothers, like, yeah, most do want to do that. And based on all the available research that we have, the happiest cohort, cohort of women in American society is married mothers. Mm -hmm. So it's just good advice to suggest to these young women who are about to have to make really important choices about the sacrifices that they might make um, in their careers in order to prioritize starting a family and doing so in a timely manner because 
when I was growing up in the millennial generation, we were constantly fed this idea that you can put your career first and focus on that as long as you want to, and you can always just have kids later. And there's a lot of women now who are getting to that age where they're realizing that actually, no, I can't do that. There's a biological clock that is well, real. Sure. I mean, but it's not the case. I mean, it, it is, it is though, not a one or the other thing, right? And right. Can, I mean, married mothers being very happy people, I accept that. But that's not, I mean, correct me if I'm the statistics wrong, but that's not people, that's not uh, women who necessarily have no jobs whatsoever. A lot of, you know, women work and then they take some time off to have kids and then they might go back to work or they might work part time. They might do something. My, you know, my own mother did that who would not have thought of herself as a very career oriented or professional, you know, working person. She, you know, worked in a nursery school and then she had kids and then she went back to working in nursery school and now she's retired. And, you know, her certainly her life was more about her family and her kids, but yes, she did work through most of her adult life. Yeah, and what I'm getting at is that there are still sacrifices you have to make related to your career, though, when you do decide to have a family, whether it is taking time off or switching to part-time work. It's just, it's just factually the case that if you decide as a woman that you want to have, let's say, two, three kids, you're probably not going to be able to be a CEO that works 80 hours a week if you want to also spend time with your family. And I think it's important for women to understand that so they don't fall into this false messaging that you can have it all or you can do everything. Because at the end of the day, something does fall by the wayside when you make these choices. What if what if the what if the woman wants to work and the the dad wants to be the stay at home parent? Is that all right with you? They're allowed to, but I would say it's <laughs> Probably, don't approve of it. I, well, I don't. I wouldn't say that I don't approve of it. I think having one parent at home is definitely better than not having any and going like the daycare route. But um, there is something special about mothers that are really vital to children, especially in the first three to one year of life that cannot be replicated by a dad merely staying home. Um, so I was not surprised to basically agree with, you know, what Bill Maher was saying there, because I mostly agree with what he has to say, especially on, like, kind of cultural issues these days. Uh, but Whoopi Goldberg, I thought, gave a very nice um, explanation of why it's perfectly fine. He can talk and other people talk, and you don't have to get outraged about it, and you can listen or not listen, and that's absolutely fine. I thought that was a pitch-perfect kind of little speech she gave there. I was so pleasantly <laughs> surprised. I can't remember the last time that I agreed with Whoopi Goldberg on just about anything, but it was measured, it acknowledged that people are gonna say things that you don't necessarily like. That doesn't mean you need to start a change.org petition to gather signatures to try to get this guy fired from his job. And there was some nice counter to the NFL releasing its statement saying, oh, he doesn't represent our values and that the wife of the Kansas City Chiefs owner and their daughter, I believe, actually came out in support of what he said and stood by him. So clearly the team is not interested in trying to bring any disciplinary action against him for- I mean, that would be insane. It, it would, would be, be totally so insane. insane. The change.org petition was insane. That, so there was such a thing to get him punished for having done this. Um, maybe maybe cancel culture's losing a little bit of its power these days, or I, actually we're gonna talk about that again in a minute. So maybe we should save our remarks for our next segment. We'll have more free media right after this. Thank you.